Hi everybody, hola a todos, Jasmine here. I'm a freelance artist in the comic book industry and this is basically my hustling game. So, as a freelancer, the first thing you really need to understand, no matter what industry you're working on, it's a hustler's game. You always have to keep hustling for that next gig. Even when you have a gig that is pretty long, like a whole year, you have to already be thinking about the next year because you don't know if you're gonna get that other gig it's not very good it's not guaranteed that's what i think i'm trying to say that's what i'm trying to say you know it's not a nine to five job where you know you're gonna be there the next day right um so yeah freelancing no matter what industry you're in is a constant constant hustle and um, I think most of the time we actually forget that or we're not experienced enough and we don't know this and we don't know that we actually have to keep hustling, right? So um, yeah, let me take you back a little bit with my experiences. Back in 2018, back when I was a student, uh, I was doing my master's degree and um, I thought that, you know, since I was doing my master's degree, I still have time, right? Um, and I actually got a gig, right, in the comic book industry. And it was a small gig, it was just a one-pager that I actually drew, illustrated, and lettered myself with uh, Oni Press. It was a webcomic and it got published and I got paid for it. And it was pretty great because to me, I wasn't thinking, okay, I'm gonna get a job with Marvel or DC, but I was thinking that it was gonna lead to other jobs with other smaller publishers, right? Um, but that didn't happen. And I guess it wasn't as a rude awakening as others that I'm gonna tell you about because I was still a student and I was still working on my craft and I was still... I, I was still under the impression that I had time and and that that was I think one of my first mistakes thinking that I had enough time and not really trying to hustle it around right um, so yes let's go a little bit fast forward again 2019 in 2019 I actually got to be considered for a book with IDW and uh, Marvel with the, their Marvel action line and I was so excited because I was, I was about to graduate from my master's degree and I thought that this was it, right? This was an opportunity that I was waiting for and what happened was that I didn't get selected <laughs> so uh, it was another rejection and this time though uh, they offered for me to do a variant cover for Captain Marvel and I did it and I was so happy and I felt like well I didn't get this series but just doing this cover is mm, it's making my work visible to other editors right that's that was my reasoning behind it and again I fell into this comfort zone that I shouldn't be and and then no freelancer should ever be <laughs> in that comfort zone of thinking like after this, something is gonna follow. And you know what? After that cover, nothing followed for me. I still kept, you know, going to conventions and trying to put my name out there, right? Um, and I would get some portfolio reviews. I got a portfolio review with Marvel and stuff like that. And and I would just keep putting my work out there as best as I could. So in a way, I was hustling, but not as aggressively as I should. So fast forward again to 2020. 20 before everything closed and that back him and the pandemic hit full on in the US um, I was being considered for another graphic novel this time with again with Marvel but with Scholastic and I was so I was so happy I was so stoked I thought for sure that I was gonna get it um, because you know the other like my work um, and everything seemed that I was going to be, at least for me in my mind, that I was going to be chosen. <laughs> um, and of course it didn't happen. They ended up going with an artist that was more experienced and had a whole different style from, mine, from me. And I think that was my, my 
sort of like that comfort zone that you kind of enter right after a rejection that was like my my consolation consolation was that you know this artist was more experienced and had a whole different style for me um, but it still sucked it still hurt uh, it was still hard for me I cry like a baby I cried for like two weeks um, and I wasn't sure something else was gonna happen um, but I guess I was kind of moving enough that something else did happen and it was um, I got to do the Goosebump Secrets of the Swamp series. I was the whole artist for the whole series and that made me really happy. And I thought again that this was gonna open doors for me, right? Um, especially because it wasn't just a cover or a one pager or like little things that I was doing for independent, um, for more independent work in the comic book industry. I thought this was a little bit more solid, right? I was, I met my deadlines. I completed a whole series and I always think that that's something that editors want to want to know that if an artist is is capable of finishing a whole you know book by the that by that deadline right um, so to me it was like I was proving myself right that I could do this that I could meet deadlines and that I could deliver good work uh, under pressure right um, but again <laughs> nothing happened and I guess my mistake was that I kind of waited after Goosebump ended to be like to actually notice that after that first month and that second month and that third month nothing was happening that's when I noticed like wait you have to keep moving you gotta keep hustling you can't just fall into this comfort zone that I was in and uh, that's what I tried to do after that I kind of messaged all the editors that I knew. Um, I also messaged the ones that I didn't knew at all, but they were open for submissions, very important. Um, so I tried putting my work out there again, as much as I could. Um, and some editors didn't reply, others did. Others said like, oh, I really like what you're doing. Um, I don't have anything for you. And others would offer constructive criticism and others yeah like I said didn't reply at all so um, I just kept going with the independent work that I had um, on my own stories as well and also doing work in other industry as a freelancer because I needed to you know pay my rent and my loans and everything right so um, after that uh, what happened was that I actually signed a good deal uh, in the traditional publishing side and the traditional publishing side is so different from like the direct market which is the monthly books that you see like you know Marvel and DC um, and we'll talk about the difference of those of those two that you know seem similar but are different and I actually signed but yeah going back to that I actually signed a book deal um, for a book titled Si Se Puede which is creator owned um, and it comes out next year 2023 uh so i've been working on it like last year and this year um and it was great because uh i felt that again things were solidifying a little bit but this time i i didn't fall into that comfort zone that i was in this time i had learned my lesson so i kept hustling i kept hustling like crazy um not just in the comic book industry but in other industries uh, because you know I needed to to pay my bills as I said so um, I just kept hustling and um, I got other you know opportunities I did some stuff with Black Mac Studios you know cover and um, a short story for their free comic book day uh, from last year and yeah I just kept going and then DC Comics last year announced that they were doing their talent hunt right and I immediately said I'm gonna apply would have having a lot of expectations because and this is the <laughs> and this is, and this was my reasoning i had applied before to other talent hunts from dc comics and i had gotten rejected to all of them and it wasn't those nice rejections where you even get your name or you know what you need to do to get better no 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 it was one of those rejections that they don't even put your name it was those blast emails so i didn't had had high hopes at all um for this but i think that's the mentality that you always need to have to have zero hopes 
still feel, you know, um, excited for things and, and, and opportunities, but don't put your hopes too high, right? And yeah, I just applied. I kind of kept going and working on my own stuff and on the book that I had, you know, already a book deal with. And to my surprise, because for me it was a surprise, I actually got into the DC Comics Milestone Initiative talent program that they 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 had. And I was so happy. For me, it was like it was like a game-changing thing, but at the same time it wasn't because I I don't think I will ever feel into that comfort zone no matter whatever happens, right? Um, and I think that's the right mindset to have to always no matter what you always have to be hustling. For me, the DC theme, the milestone initiative for me is like when you're playing Mario Kart and you get that little star. Um, that's what it is. It's like a little boost that you need to make the best of it. And then you have to also keep looking for the next star, keep looking for the next boost. And that to me is exactly what it is. But it was still a great experience. I got to meet amazing artists, writers, editors, colorists, designers. I mean, I got to meet Jim Lee, which was pretty cool. But I think the best part out of all was meeting all these other writers and artists that were in the same boat that I was. And, you know, building that community, it was it was pretty cool. So, um, fast forward to 2022, the program has ended. I'm about to finish my creator own book titled Si Se Puede, which comes out, uh, 20, comes out next year, um, 2023. And I also got to do a short with Marvel um, for an anthology that's coming out in actually this in a few weeks in September 28th. I think it's next week. Yeah, it's next week, I think, <laughs> uh, which is great. Um, I'm so happy. Uh, I actually got to do a short with Shark Girl and Namor. And if you know me, you know I'm a huge, big X Men nerd. So I was pretty happy that the first story that I got to do with Marvel was actually an X Men uh, Shark Girl. So I, I was pretty happy. I'm really happy with it, and I hope you guys consider picking it up. Um, I had lots of fun illustrating it illustrating it and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did so um yeah and also I sent another book deal for 2025 that that's when the book deal the book comes out it's titled we are pan and other stuff that I can't really talk about because I'm on, under an NDA um so it's been good uh but as you can see i hadn't settled I, I i haven't settled into that comfort zone right i still keep hustling and i still keep planning ahead and having plan a plan b and plan c and i think this is the point of the whole video is to like sometimes i feel like we go into this comfort zone and we think that um we think that because we got this opportunity or we got something published, um, we're going to, you know, make it. Or even if we just get this portfolio review with Marvel or DC, we think that there's gonna be an opportunity behind that. And sometimes there isn't. So you have to be prepared for that. And you always have to be hustling because no matter what level you are in, as an artist or writer, whatever is your craft, you always have to keep hustling because there's somebody else that's also hustling and wants the same job. So yes, that's like basically the whole thing. Hustle, 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 and never stop. Never find that comfort because when you do find that comfort, there's something wrong. At least that's what I think. Um, anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, for the next video, I wanna talk about how to break into comics. Um, what you know the big names like Jim Lee says and what I say <laughs> um, but basically because it's I think it's important because as what I'm seeing now as somebody that is getting jobs right now and getting her foot in the door right now I want to share what I have seen and, and the things that I have done just to get where I am so yeah that's basically it thank you again for tuning in i hope to see you in the next one and please leave your thoughts and comments 
if you want. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Adios.